Blessings, blessings, blessings. Bless the Lord, beloved of God. I am so glad that you are here joining with me today. Uh, if you are not able to be on with us, it's quite all right. Uh, uh, today's uh, presentation will be uh, recorded and, and it will be on Facebook Live, of course, or, or you can go back and listen to the recording. And it will also be on uh, uh, YouTube. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be with you today. I'm real excited about what we're talking about today. Uh, usually I kind of deal with news type situations. Today, God has is, is, uh, commanded me this morning in my prayer time. He said, I want you to change the structure. And usually the structure is we take and bring biblical perspectives to things that are going on in our environment. Well, I'm going to just change the order a little bit today by the Spirit of God. And we're going to uh, focus on the house of God. Why? Because it is by way of the house of God, uh, or let us say it simply, uh, as the church goes, the world should go. It's been backwards. Uh, the church has been going as the world goes, but but it should be as the church goes, the world goes. So once we fix things, hallelujah, by the spirit of God in the house of God, then I believe that we'll have an impact uh, on, on the world. So uh, we need to deal with our with our own issues. We have no power. There is no demonstration uh, or execution of God's power in the world because the church is so broken. And so uh, am I one that has no faith in the church? No, I wholeheartedly believe in the Lord of the church. This is the vineyard, but God is the Lord of the vineyard. And so uh, what I want to talk about today is it's hopefully is going to inspire those that are in the vineyard. The laborers will come forth. Hallelujah. And we will be able to impact change in our world. So today I want to deal with something that I don't hear often in in a very uh, in a, most churches. I don't hear it talked about very little uh, or very much. And uh, and even if you look at the Internet, a lot of times there's not a whole lot of uh, uh, people talking about it on the internet. I don't spend much time on the internet. Hey, sweetie pie, I don't spend a whole lot of time on the internet. But uh, a lot of times when I want to talk about something, I go and just kind of see what people were talking about. And and I was really surprised that there was not a whole lot of information. Then again, I, I'm really not surprised. Hey, baby girl, good to see you, boo. Uh, uh, then again, I'm really not surprised uh, because uh, we are being impacted right now. We're, we're being impacted right now by uh, uh, a characterless church. And so what I want to talk about today is character. I want to talk about the, the character of God and how it should be manifested in, in God's people. Why? Because it is by way of the character of God that we are able to um, uh, uh, impact change on, on this world. It's hard for us to impact the world when they don't see godliness on the inside of us. So when we look like the world, when we act like the world, when we talk like the world, when we dress like the world, when everything that we do is like the world, but we are constantly talking about Jesus and how the world needs Jesus, the world sees us just like them. So I don't blame them for not flocking into the church. Why? Because why would they come into the house of God and get much of the same thing they can get outside of the house? So the world does not have to come, waste time on on Sunday morning, waste money on Sunday morning, waste gas on Sunday morning, getting the same thing uh, uh, that they can get inside, uh, 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 getting the same thing they can get outside of the church, being able to keep their money, uh, uh, they can come and find that in the church. So so I don't really blame uh, that we have not had a huge impact on things right now because the the, the, the character of the church is broken. So I want to I wanna deal with, with character today. And I'm going to deal with, uh, uh, I, I want to explain what character is, and I want to explain why we are suffering so much in the body of Christ, why we are not seeing miracles, signs, and wonders. A lot of it has to do with our character, with the God has told us that he has not just given us power, but he has given us dominion. We have been given the, the, the dominion. We have been given power over this earth, over the creeping and crawling things, over sickness, over disease. God gave us dominion over those things. He didn't just give us dominion, but he gave us power and he gave us authority as well. They are keys of the kingdom. We, he gave us the, the, the place to use his power and authority. So we don't have to just sit here and watch all this death. We don't have to just sit here and, and allow uh, the, the, the things of this world to affect the church. But the reason why it is doing so is because we uh, accept anything in the church. So 
Is this beat up the church? They know, but somebody has to tell the truth. So I, I appreciate you being on with me. Spread this word. Uh, send it to church leaders because that's mainly who I'm uh, be talking about today. Not criticizing them, but, but beseeching them and, and myself that we come up to a higher level of righteousness, that we come up to a higher level, that we are examples, a better example. We have been failing as church leaders. I do my best, you know, but but uh, but we need to come up. And, and I know how I live. So I live a life trying to doing everything in my power to demonstrate the the character of godliness but but I still need to do better and so I'm talking to those those uh, 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 men and women of God out there that just want to do better and I'm also mainly talking to those men and women of God out there that know what you're doing you know that you are living in outright sin but you are commanding God's people every Sunday you are making them or you are charging them to test that you fail and so I think that's wrong. I think that's wrong. And I think it's time for pastors, for apostles, for men of God, women of God, like, like myself, to be able to judge these things and call these things to the carpet. All right. What is character? Character is simply defined as the, the mental and moral qualities of an individual. So it, it, it is the way we think. It is the way, but not just the way we think uh, on natural things, uh, uh, like handling our money and, and, and the way we deal with people uh, uh, on our jobs, but it's a moral moral issue too. Those things that nobody else are really seeing about you. Character is that thing when you are not around church and you are not around people. How do you act? What do you say? What's your thinking? What is your, your moral qualities? What do you do when nobody is watching you? That's what character is. Character is, uh, all, all character says is that, is, is that we have a way about us that defines us. So I want, I want you to think today about what is that way about you? Because that way about you that people see, it is, excuse me, it is really the thing that defines you. And so what you act and uh, how you act and how you think, all that kind of stuff, those are the things that define you. That is your moral and your mental character is defined by your activity. And so the things that we do defines our moral character. It is what we are. It, it is what we are. It doesn't have to stay that way, but character, character is not just good. You can have poor character and still character. So the definition of character does not signify whether it is good or bad. Whatever we do on a regular basis, whatever we think, however we act, whatever we are doing, when people are not around, it is your it is your character. And so and so it may not be who you are, but it is certainly what people think you are because you you are demonstrating what you are. Your character is in your footsteps, not just your words. I know a whole lot of men who talk Jesus all the time, but I watch their footsteps and they don't walk Jesus much at all. And so the character is not so much in what they're saying. We can preach all day long. We can command. And people do all day long. But if you are not doing these things, then your character is not in your words, but in your footsteps. And so we're talking about character today. For those that are just coming on, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we love you in Jesus. So it is time. What, what is it time? Why am I so uh, 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 feel so passionate and urgent about this? It is time for the for the church to be who it is. It is time for the church to stop commanding those around us to live in ways that we won't even live. And so I know men of God that are in the pulpit every Sunday, and I know they are living totally contrary to what they believe. And so all character is and all God is demanding for men and women of God is that we finally live what we say we believe. And so if you are out there and, and you are not walking, if you are preaching the word, teaching the word, but you are living something contrary to the word, then it is God is calling us to the carpet right now. And he is saying, I'm watching you. I see your activities. I hear your words. I hear the things that you are saying to people. I hear the condemnation that you are speaking. I hear the things that you are speaking over God's people, but I am watching your footsteps. When the congregation is not seeing you, I do. When the congregation is not hearing you, I do. When the congregation is not, is not witnessing your movements, God is just saying today to these men and women of God out there, I do. I see all of that. And so I'm here today as an apostle, I'm here today as a man of God saying, hallelujah, that it is time for God's people. It is your responsibility to begin to hold men and women of God uh, uh, to their character. It is time for us. You are have been given judgment power. You have been given the power to judge and to say this man, this woman is not living what they are saying. And so I am not going to serve them anymore. I'm, I'm going to keep serving God, but I'm not going to serve this hypocrite 
hypocritical man anymore. You have a right to go to your pastor and say, pastor, I don't appreciate you living like this. And, and God wants you to change this thing. He can do whatever he want to. He do, do whatever he want to. God will judge him. You don't have the power to call him away, out of his position, but you do have the power to judge how he is walking while he's in his position. Let me say that again. You have no power to pull him out of his position. But you do have the power to tell him that you don't appreciate how he's living in his position. The reason why the church is so broken and is so splintered, why there is no manifestation of God's power is because men and women of God are allowing you as the congregants or allowing men that you know are whoremongers. You are allowing men and women of God that you know are cheaters and liars. You are allowing them to come and stand in the pulpit the day after they apologize for cheating on their wives again, the day after they got caught sleeping with boys and girls again, the day after they got caught stealing from the church again, you are letting them back in the pulpit. You are accepting their apology as enough, but you are not judging their character. It is not enough just for us to accept their, their apology. It is not enough for them to seek our forgiveness and we not make them sit down like they would make you sit down uh, if they caught you in sin. So I know I'm going to have uh, uh, some blowback from pastors. You know it's true. You know that you're not living according to what you're preaching. You know that you are forcing God's people to take tests that you failed. And it's time out for that. And I'm here as an apostle called by God, hallelujah, to judge not your words, but your activities. I'm here as an apostle called by God. And I, I am a man that fights desperately. Yes, I need to get better. But I fight desperately, desperately to maintain the character of godliness. Let me go on and, and finish writing. But I, 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 it is time for God's people to come out of deception. What is it time? I just wrote a few notes. It's time for we as men of God, and this is to church leaders, as men of God, church leaders, to stop demanding tests that we fail. It is time for us to demonstrate what we demand. Listen to what I'm saying, people of God. It is time for me as a man of God. It is time for the men and women of God out there. It is time for you as people of God that you not just hear the good, great gifting of some man, but it is time for us to call to the carpet and make them demonstrate what we demand from you. I fight desperately to demonstrate to God's people first what I demand from them. I demand holiness, but I fight desperately to live holy. I demand loyalty, but I fight desperately to live loyal. The things that I demand of God's people, the things that I preach to God's people, I fight desperately to, to make sure those things are not hypocritical things, but they are things that I, live, that, that I live. So make them demonstrate what they demand. It is time to possess more than just our strong gift, men of God. I'm talking to you, men and women of God. It is time for us to possess more than just our strong gift with weak character. That is what we've been dealing with. Why don't we see miracles, signs, and wonders, guys? Aren't y'all tired of just having church? Aren't you tired of people dying in your church? Aren't you tired when, we, when, when the Bible says we have power to lay hands on the sick and they do recover? When the Bible says that we can say that we have been anointed by God to set at liberty those that are captive, uh, that the Spirit of God has anointed us for multiple services. Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired of not seeing the execution of these things? Aren't you tired of just having men and women of God stand in front of you with great gifts but weak character? Character sustains our gifting. Character is the thing. The, our moral and our mental thinking, it, that soundness that God brings. I called it soundness. It is our soundness. It is our moral and mental uh, soundness that, that stabilizes or that fortifies the gifting. We have churches filled we are witnessing in real time right now. I know I am. I'm witnessing in real time right now the church of Corinth. I'm witnessing the church of Corinth. Churches filled with giftings, packed to the ceiling with giftings, but no character. Why? Because the leader cannot call out what he walks in. Now you need to take a footnote on that one. A leader cannot call out what he walks in. He cannot call out a lack of character if he walks in a lack of character. He cannot call out the, the he cannot judge things that he participates in. Character is the sustainer of the gift. It is, remember this, beloved of God, it is the anointing of God that breaks the yoke. 
Luke 4 and 18 says that it is the anointing. Let me read it. I just want to read it. But I read it. I don't want nobody to say he is quoting the word wrong. So Luke 4 and 18 reads this. It reads, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Say that's me. Because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, to recovery of sight to the blind, and set at liberty those who are oppressed. That's the word of God. Now, I thought it uh, interesting that the word did not mention our gifting. It talked about the anointing, though. It says it, it did not say gifting. It said it was the anointing. So what am I saying? You can be gifted and not anointed. And if you, as people of God, if you don't know the difference... If you don't know the difference, then you'll be then we are just going to be a hamsters on a wheel. Keep on following the same people. We follow personalities. We follow we follow notoriety. We follow big names. But you can't follow the anointing because a lot of them don't have one. We follow the strong gift, excuse me, the strong gift that are the strong gift that they are. Never even examining the character of these men and women of God. I'm talking about myself, too. I'm not singling me out. You have a responsibility to, to make sure that I am living according to what I'm demanding you to live. So why? So your, so your children will be healed. So your drug addicted family members can get free. The reason why they can't is because men of God are not calling to, to the lack of character out in the church because they are steeped in lack of character. It is the anointing that breaks the yoke. It said nothing about, uh, about our gifting. Unfortunately... It's just in my notes, unfortunately, this is the reason why we aren't seeing miracles right now. Signs and wonders, as the Bible has said that we're to experience in the American church. The American church is not seeing, is not witnessing miracle signs and wonders. Not with any regularity. Not with all, we are the freest nation. Think about this. The Bible says one can set a thousand to flight, two can set 10,000. Well, we have millions and millions and millions of people, millions of people, almost half of this nation, Claims to be evangelical, charismatic, Pentecostal Christians. And, and with, with, with half of a nation this size claiming to have power, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how is anybody dying sick? The reason is there is no power. There is access to it, but it's your lifestyle that's keeping us from it. Leaders of God. You have to come up higher in your lifestyle. Your lifestyle is keeping us from power. If you have a, listen to this analogy, if there is a drain pipe and then it's clogged with hair, let's just talk plumbing for a second. If it's a drain pipe clogged with hair and there is a, a water or whatever it is trying to get through it, it is blocked. It cannot get through it. We see trickles of, the, uh, of whatever's trying to get through the pipe, but it's not going to come at the force that it can. Why? Because there's something blocking it. That is what's happening in the spirit of God. There is a pipe, the conduit of God's power. We are not the power source, but we are the conduit by which the power source flows. And so if there is a blockage in the pipe, in the line in which the power source needs to flow through, then there can be no no power flowing through it. We see trickles of God's glory. We see trickles of God's anointing. We see trickles of signs. We see trickles of wonders. The, but the Bible says this simply, that these things follow them which do believe. And so we should not be seeing trickles. If we got all these believers, then we should see a mass of, uh, of power. We should see a mass of, 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 of people being delivered. We should see a mass. There should be revival in this nation that is unending. We should see revival right now that is never ending. There should not be any divisions in the body of Christ. If we have all the power that we claim from being believers, these things follow them which do believe. That's just what it's supposed to be. That's just how it's supposed to be. That's not me. That's the, that, that's, that's the word of God. So we're not seeing miracles. We're not seeing signs or wonders in the American church. Why? Because we have more gifting than anointing. As a church, we have settled for personalities. We have settled for giftings. We have settled for big names. We've settled at church has become, has become corporations. Church has become the stage or the altar has become a stage, a platform for, for entertainment. We, we, we may as well sell tickets. We may as well sell, sell tickets to the stage show. That, that, that people are wanting to see. And we have these, we create these big personalities. We create these big old giftings. We create superstar preachers. But people are dying everywhere. 
So why aren't some of these superstar preachers have a greater impact in the community? Why are people still drug addicted? Why is the church still filled with whoredom? Why does the Bible in Isaiah call the people, liken the people of God? Why? Why? It's the same thing that's happened today that happened in the time of Isaiah. I've been doing some deep study in Isaiah. God actually said that, that you are like Sodom. And that you are like Gomorrah. We are uh, as the people of Sodom. We are as the people of Gomorrah. Why? Because even as children of God, we are acting as those people acted then. It is time to do better, people of God. It is time that we begin to examine the character of our men and women of God, the leaders. Those that call themselves set over us. It is time for you. I charge you today. It is time for you to begin to examine them. It is time for you to begin to say, I need you to act like what you are telling me to act like. I need to see some fruit in your uh, and not just your toot. I don't need to just hear your words. I see it. I need to see some demonstration. It is time for God's people to study God's character. There is a character that your men of God, that your women of God should walk in. It is the character of God, but people of God, if you are not studying, if you don't know the character of God, then you won't know what the men of God that you serve should look like. You need to know what God's character looks like in order to know who to pull and sit in front of you or who to sit and follow. It's time for God's people to know God's character. Why? Why? Therefore, we will know, we'll know how to choose God's leaders and what standard to hold them to. Hey, Kinzana, you need to know, you need to know what God's leaders should look like. You need to know what standard to hold them to. It is time to stop just hearing their words and, and feeling the great emotion that they make you feel and say, that must be a man of God because he made me feel so good. Yeah, but is your life changing, beloved of God? That's the question. Is your life changing? Are you a 30-year believer and nothing has happened in your life? You have not grown beyond the day of your salvation. You need to examine the character, not just of your leader, but your own character. You need to examine how he's walking, what he's talking about, his life outside of the pulpit and in front of you and in front of you. No believer is born. So I'm going to say no believer is born as an adult believer. There is a growth process to get to where we need to go. But but we are allowing men and women of God uh, uh, for, for the you know, they, they talk about God is working through me. Yeah, but 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 there is a blockage in the execution or the anointing. So there is no real there's no real demonstration of God's power. So I just wrote a little stuff. The work through us only comes when we allow him to work on us. Listen to that again. God's work through us or his anointing through us. His power to change things. Remember I said it's the anointing that breaks the yoke, not the man's gifting. And so if there is no flow, if there is a blockage in the in by which, by which the power flows, if there is something in the line that is stopping a free flow of God's power, then there is something that needs to be worked on in these men and women of God, in us, in all of us as believers. Why? Because the work through us can only be effective when we are uh, after we allow the spirit of God to work on us. So if there is something broken in your character or something broken in your soul, you cannot expect God to, to work completely through you. You just can't. Why? Because it is, the, it is the character, I told you, it is the character that sustains the gift. It is the character that sustains the gift. I know we're running out of time. I try to get this done. You know, you think 30 minutes is a lot of time, but it is, especially when there's so much to be said. I hope you are getting something out of this. Spread the word. I don't care who it makes mad. If you know me, you know I don't care who gets mad and how long they stay mad. There is a great purging happening right now. Let's be encouraged today, y'all. I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged. Why? Because God is purging his body right now. Hallelujah. There is a pruning going on right now. Hallelujah. He is cutting away the dead things out of your soul. He is opening your eyes and enlightening the eyes of your understanding. The spirit of God himself is teaching you what leadership should look like. He is teaching you and he is giving you the boldness, holy boldness to call these wicked leaders to the carpet and tell them, I see what you're doing. If you have a prophetic voice, let it flow. Uh, uh, you, he, he is purging the house of God right now. He's cutting away dead things. There's a great purging happening in the body right now. When it is over, and I wrote this by the Spirit of God, the herd will be thinner. You may not see as many members as you saw in a particular church, but his anointing be, will be free-flowing. Woo! 
I can rejoice on that one. There may not be as many people in the houses of God, churches large and small, mine and others, but there is going to be a free flow of God's anointing. And so I'm telling you, if you are out there and God has called you to ministry, allow the spirit of God to work on you so he can work through you. Why? Because you might be the next person that God sets in place of that leader that he had to remove. I'm hoping my desire and my hope is that they repent, that we all repent, that we come to a place in God's anointing that where, where we are transparent about what we are doing. But this purge is going to tell the truth. We may have a thinner, uh, a thinner herd, but his anointing will be free flowing through men and women of God demonstrating. Listen to what I'm saying. Demonstrating the character of God. So if you are out there, let God work on you. Let God purge you. Let God. Your life should be, your, your, your character should, the soundness says, how well can I endure suffering? The soundness through you, believers, to, and I'm talking to, to those that are, that are maybe not sitting over church right now, but character brings about patience in your sufferings. Character brings about purity. There should be a way that you walk in, in your sufferings, in the things that you go through. God uses, uh, what does God use to build character? Character. He uses sufferings to build character. He uses sufferings to, to, to prove himself in you. Everything that you go through, don't run from the process. Allow the spirit of God to, to work character in you through your pain. Be patient with the process. When you are finished, my God, you are going to be full of the free flow of God's anointing. People will be healed and delivered just from you because you are awesome. God has called you to this great service. He has called you to this great work. I don't care what your life looks Look like yesterday. Just being here in the presence of the uh, of, of the of the per, uh, of the purpose and the pain of God. I see you, boy. I see uh, uh, of God's. If you allow the pain, yes, that my, my boo listens real close to what I'll be saying. If you allow the pain, it will manifest your purpose. It will. Endure the process. Let God establish character in you. Let let God prove and proof who you are. In Jesus' name, I want to read this this, this text real quick. Hallelujah. Uh, and uh, I'm going to let you uh, 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 away from here. I want to read uh, uh, the qualifications of, of, of an elder. Paul says, this is why I left you in Crete. It's verse five. So that you might put what remained in order. He's basically telling them, uh, uh, I need you to establish leadership in my church or uh, in the church uh, of Jesus Christ. And, and so Paul, as the apostle, he begins to tell them, uh, 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 this is what leaders should look like. So I want you to get this in your spirit. And then we're going to pray and get on out of here. Verse six says, if anyone is uh, above reproach, let's stop for just a second. Reproach. I, I said, Lord, I, I need to, I, I see what your, what the definition about reproach is, but I need to, where's some synonyms? You know, uh, uh, so I went to some synonyms and, and they were powerful synonyms. Reproach, dishonorable men, disgraceful, scandalous. Now, I don't know about you, but I've seen all of this in leaders that that are have position right now in major congregations. They are dishonorable men. They are disgraceful. And the Bible goes on to talk about greed. They're scandalous. So it says if any is above all these things. If they're honorable men, if they're not disgraceful and they have their, their, their lives are not with scandal, then then this that's this is the beginning of. And it says the husband of one wife and his children are believers and not open to the charge of debauchery or, or insubordination. For an overseer as God's steward. I'll be the first that the congregation here at, dwelling, at his dwelling place. No, I'll tell you in a minute. I don't own this church. I'm just a steward. I've been charged with the oversight. So I've been charged to walk in this manner that I'm reading. Verse seven, for an overseer as God's steward must be above reproach. He must not be arrogant or quick tempered or a drunkard or violent or greedy for gain. Be hospitable, a lover of, of, of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught. In other words, that all nine is saying is you must practice what you preach, brother, so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. Wow. That's powerful to me. That's the word of God. What am I saying? I'm saying that the, all, all, the, all the word of God is saying is you must be able to, you cannot preach this if you're not living this. 
You must be able to be judged on that that you are judging. In other words, man of God, if you are telling me to be all these things, then I must see you be all these things or you are not allowed to tell me to be these things. Basically, let me give you one little last. Okay, give me two more minutes. I want to give you, I, I've been studying Isaiah and I thought it was so powerful. Well, uh, you know, if you, if you know the history of Isaiah, Isaiah preached over about 60 to 65 years. Uh, uh, he prophesied through three different lineages of kings or three different kings. He prophesied to Israel in a time when Israel was in was in uh, a willful disobedience. And so a willful rebellion. So but this is the in, in, in chapter three, verse 12 or chapter uh, 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 three, verse 12 through 14. He begins. He's talking about he's talking to the people about their chosen leadership. These are leaders that they chose. So what am I saying? You have chosen the leadership that's in front of you. You have a responsibility to go in and reevaluate the leaders, the the people, whether it's governmental leaders, whether it's church leaders, whether it's your business leaders, whatever the case may be, you have a responsibility to judge these men and women and make sure that they are holding the standard that they are, are maintaining are, are maintaining that you hold. Isaiah verse three, uh, Isaiah chapter three, verse 12, and I'm rushing, trying to get it done. As for my people, children, children are your, uh, are your oppressors. Now, this is powerful. Basically, what he's saying is immature men, boy teachers, you have chosen or do you, uh, uh, your leaders as your leaders, and all they can do is oppress you. So it says, so I want you to look around at the churches today. It says, as for my people, his people, church people, children are immature leaders, are your oppressors and women, women rule over you. We have to know the day. So we're going to skip over that one real quick. I have no problem with women preaching in the church. My wife is a, is, is a gangster. She's a thug. She can out preach me. Okay. All my people, they, which lead thee, cause thee to error. Now this ain't me. This is the word. Isaiah 3, 12. They that lead thee cause you to err and destroy thy paths. The Lord, verse 13, the Lord standeth up to plead and standeth to judge the people. Now, God is going to come and judge the people. Why? Because of the people that you have picked to lead you. Why? Because we have a responsibility to judge the leaders or to pick the right leaders. Why? Because those leaders are going to lead you their way and it's outside of God's way. So God still is going to hold you responsible for what you listen to ungodly leaders say. That's powerful. Rewind the tape if you need to hear it again. Verse 14, and I'm out of here. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people. He's talking about those that's supposed to be mature leaders and the princes thereof. For they have, oh, this is powerful. For they have eaten up the vineyard and spoiled the poor in their houses. In other words, they have taken everything that the people have. I'm closing my book. They have taken everything that the people had to offer and given nothing back. They have demanded large givings. I have no problem with men of God receiving givings, but I, I do this. I have a problem with a man getting rich and his church is poor. I do have a problem with that. That's why I'm a... See that right there? That's real estate. I'm a hustling preacher. I sell houses to maintain my, the lifestyle my wife and I live. We live a very comfortable lifestyle, but it's not off the backs of God's people. I'm not telling you what God told you to do what you do. Handle your business. Uh, but I have a lifestyle that my church can't afford right now. So I work. I work. I work for me, but I work. Hallelujah. And so uh, all I'm asking you today, all I'm uh, uh, charging you to the day, beloved of God, is that you begin to uh, to pick your leaders, not just based off of how good they preach, how good they sing and how good they make your flesh feel, but how they walk, not just how they talk, how they live. Pick your leaders based off of character. Why? Because character sustains the gifting that they that God truly gave them. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Uh, I did my best to express your heart. Hopefully, I did not say more than I should have, Father, but if I did, forgive me. And Lord, I ask for change in the house of God. I know this word is not going to be a word well accepted, not by God's people, but by those that lead God's people. But I pray for change. I pray for a spirit of reformation, Lord God. I pray for revival to begin to hit in the pulpits and then spread to the pews. In Jesus' name, it is my declaration. I decree as God's man, as God's apostle, chosen by God, not called, named myself, but chosen by God. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. Amen and amen. We love you over here at His Dwelling Place International. Be blessed.